Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit Inforum.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. 80 years ago, thousands of people flocked to downtown Fargo to see a captured Japanese submarine. The vessel was all the way from Pearl Harbor, and it had a purpose far beyond satisfying curiosity. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs. Welcome to Back Then. Well, these days, if you take a stroll down Broadway, just south of Northern Pacific Avenue toward the railroad tracks, You'll pass banks, restaurants, and a place to get your dog groomed. But 80 years ago, you could see and maybe even touch evidence of the enemy. On September 21st, 1943, at the height of World War II, a Japanese submarine was parked on the street just south of where the old Broadway restaurant is now. And thousands of curious folks came out to catch a glimpse. According to the story in the forum on September 23, 1943, between 8,000 and 9,000 people viewed the sub that day. They strolled along catwalks to get the best view of the Japanese mini-sub. They filed past at a rate of about 1,800 an hour until about 10 p.m. when traffic slowed down. It was definitely the hottest attraction in town. But why was it here and where did it come from? Well, the stories in the newspaper didn't go into great detail about the submarine itself. It only stated that it was a Japanese submarine. But it was likely a Japanese HA-19 captured at Pearl Harbor on December 8th. Now, while many people know about the aerial attack on the Hawaiian base on December 7th, 1941, you might not realize that the Japanese were also launching a naval attack that day. According to the Submarine Force Library Museum Association, the Imperial Japanese Navy sent a group of submarines to surround Oahu to sink any American ships seeking to flee. Some of the submarines were equipped with top-secret mini-subs carrying two torpedoes and two crew members. Of three mini-subs on duty that day, two sunk, one before even arriving at Pearl Harbor and the other after the attack. But a third sub washed ashore on the 8th. One crew member had died and the other was captured. That submarine was seized and put to work, this time for the United States. Now, one quick note, while it is likely that the sub that visited Fargo that day was the HA-19 from Pearl Harbor, there is a chance it was a similar mini-sub called the HA-8, the Submarine Museum states that an HA-8 was sunk off Guadalcanal in late 1942 and salvaged in 1943. Now, it was also put into service on war bond drives, but it just wasn't as widely seen as the HA-19. Okay, so the U.S. government had seized the sub, so they decided to spend some time studying it. But then the sub was sent on a nationwide tour in an effort to garner support for the war effort and sell war bonds. War bonds are debt securities that help finance the military in times of conflict. In September of 1943, the nation was in the middle of the third war bond effort. In one of his famous fireside chats, President Franklin Roosevelt called on Americans to contribute your share and more than our share. The goal was to raise $15 billion. To get the word out, posters were hung and advertisements were placed in newspapers calling for people to back the attack. The slogan was even used in traditional advertisements for clothing and household goods. If you go to the story at inform.com, in fact, you'll see one ad for Sears women's clothing. So right alongside the seven night or the seven seventy five fall dress and a, a winter coat for about forty dollars, you see a big slogan that says back the attack by a one hundred dollar bond. So that's kind of funny. That was right alongside all the much more aggressive um bond issue advertisements that were in the paper during that time. But seeing all these posters and ads, or even watching film reels from the front lines, could only go so far to convince people to give up their hard-earned money. Bringing the war to the people might be key. According to the Submarine Museum, a Japanese submarine provided a physical reminder of what Japan had done to them, 
and promoted the rallying cry of Remember Pearl Harbor. So, like a hairband in the 80s, the little Japanese submarine went on a massive nationwide tour. According to the form, the submarine arrived in Fargo from Hillsboro, North Dakota, and was met at the North Dakota Agricultural College. That's now NDSU. They were met by the Fargo police and the school's training units and drum corps, along with other city dignitaries. During its time in downtown Fargo, WDAY AM radio personalities served as MCs and public address announcers, while entertainment was furnished by members of the WDAY Bond Caravan Crew and the Military Band of Air Cadets from Moorhead State Teachers College, which of course is now MSUM. The one-day visit of the Japanese sub stirred people in the area to dig a little deeper to support the war effort. E.E. E. Simonson, who co-chaired the city bond drive, told the form it was one of the heaviest days in volume for bonds sold, with long lines at the post office and in theaters. When the third war loan drive was completed on October 2, 1943, $19 billion had been raised nationwide. That was $4 billion more than Franklin Roosevelt's goal. By the end of 1943, the end of the war was in sight. It would last just another year and a half, and curiosity seekers in Fargo-Moorhead could claim they played their part in paying for it. Thanks for joining me on Back Then. I hope you catch me next week. If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out our full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at inforum.com slash podcasts. That's inforum.com slash podcasts.